Hello, I am Joseph Swenson, and I'm very happy to be here in Bordeaux at the beautiful auditorium that I look forward to making many, many, many wonderful concerts in. I have a sense it was about eight or nine years ago that I came here the first time. And uh, I remember very clearly the feeling at the first rehearsal and, and the, the music and the, even the, the way individual people played. I remember we played in a dreadful uh, sports ar arena, which was very challenging to try and make a, a really beautiful sound. Uh, but everyone was, was really trying very hard. And, and I remember afterwards thinking, oh, wow, what an orchestra that is, and just, oh, I really uh, carried this feeling with me for many, many months, hoping uh, that, that uh, the orchestra will invite me back, because this is very uh, unusual feeling. And I waited, and I waited, and I eventually, learned that it was possible to do another one. And so we had, uh, over those years, oh, I don't know, three programs. And then there was a long break. But during this long break, I still waited, you will know. It's kind of, it's a little romantic. It's like you, if you meet somebody and, and you are waiting for them to call you and they don't call you. And, uh, and of course, then when they call, it's a very, very deep feeling. For, for me, when I came just within this last year, this was uh, another big, uh, joyful, feeling for me personally. I would say that in a way the, the sound of the Bordeaux and the capital de Toulouse is for me possible to compare to the famous difference between the Berlin Philharmonic and the Vienna Philharmonic. So for me, Toulouse definitely plays like the Berlin Philharmonic. They, they are making very dark, deep sound and the strings are playing very deep down into the string with rather slow, slow bow and, and lots of mass, earth. It's, um, for me, this is a sound of, of, of matter. Bordeaux, they can make this sound. If I ask them, they can, they can do everything. But if, if I ask them, but when they are playing the most beautiful and the most special is when they are making a sound more um, ethereal and less like the earth, more like the air or, or, or like light. So in, in this way, it's, uh, it's rather than matter, it is energy. They can be more flexible, that the rhythm is not as, as solid. Yeah? Now, of course, you know, it depends entirely on the repertoire, whether Toulouse m might be preferable to one conductor or another, or the sound here would be preferable for different, for other types of music, because there are composers that are more like light, and there are others that are more like earth. I try not to have a, a, a too uh, specific plan. I don't think very much. I start at the beginning as often as possible, and I go through until the end as often as possible. And of course, at the first rehearsal, we are playing through without stopping. And even if there are mistakes, even if there are big mistakes, we try and continue and get to the end, and then we go to the beginning, and then everything is different because we know it a little bit better, and we know each other's way. And so the second time, they remember how I did some things. I never do exactly the same thing in the same way twice. It's impossible. So the second time you play something, it has to be a slightly different piece because you've done it just before. 
Yeah? So, so one needs to be in the present moment. I think many artists, they, they have a kind of a concept and, and ideal, and they try to, to make this ideal every time they play in every place they are, and they try to control the, the, the future. Yeah? Because this is, a, this is a way of being safe. You have your ideal, and then you just make it. And, you, and then you, the only way to do that is to control the people. And you control them to do it the way you plan to do it, then you will never be surprised. And some people, they live their whole lives like this. And it's fine. But for me, it's not so interesting. Um, I, I realized not that long ago that, that everything in my life, if I am making plans, then to to, to in, in, invent the plan and then to decide how to make the plan come true and then hopefully to succeed in fulfilling the plan. To me, that was never as interesting at the end of the process than if I only followed the life. And then the life creates the future. So if I'm starting from the beginning and the orchestra is responding to me and I'm responding to them and then if there are problems, we stop and we go back and usually I say nothing. I don't know how it is for other conductors. I've always been incredibly impressed by a conductor who can do beautiful work, who doesn't play all the instruments. To me, that is amazing. Because for me, it's absolutely necessary that I played or tried to play all the instruments. And I did. Between age, well, starting when I was a ch very small child, I started playing piano when I was about two years old. My mother is a pianist. So she would want to practice, and I wouldn't, wouldn't allow her to practice unless she put me on her lap and taught me something. And then she would practice something with her left hand while I was practicing something with my right. And it was very nice for me. I loved sitting on my mother's lap. She's a nice lady, you know. She's 95 years old now. But uh, yeah, so, so then my father, he's teaching um, children uh, woodwind and brass instruments, also percussion, in a school in a very, very dangerous neighborhood in New York City, in the South Bronx, which was the most dangerous part of, of the world in, in the late 60s and early 70s when I was 9, 10, 11 years old. But he would bring home instruments. One day he brought a trumpet. I was like, ah, oh, can you teach me how to make a sound on that? And he taught me how to make a sound, and I practiced that trumpet for weeks and weeks and weeks until I felt like I could play something. And, and then, you know, I, I, I would say to him, okay, um, maybe something else next week? You can gonna... And then he would, he would bring, bring a clarinet, a bassoon, a, you know, it was this way for years and years and years. The, the purpose isn't so that I can feel like a colleague. The purpose is so that I can play the music when, with them. I am playing with them. Each one, when, they are, when the oboe is playing, I'm playing it with him. I can feel how it feels. Oh, I have tried all, all of them, but I have really learned well to play the bass tuba. That is my favorite. And I played tuba for many, many years, and I loved it so much, mostly, I think, because it was a, a necessary balance to all the ridiculous high music that I was practicing on the violin for hours and hours, and finally I could sit with the tuba, and play, oh, what a feeling, what a feeling. When I was nine years old, I heard a performance that my father actually took part in. He played the E-flat clarinet part in Mahler Symphony No. 1. And it was with an orchestra that, well, he took a break from teaching for one year. He wanted, he took one audition, and he got a job in the New Orleans, Louisiana Symphony Orchestra, who played quite well but very um, precarious um, financial situation there, and they eventually had to close. But 
he played for one year there, and the first concert I went to with, with him playing, I sat very high in the balcony. I'll never forget the sound and the, the way the orchestra looked. Mahler First Symphony, the first time I ever heard the piece. And afterwards, when we got home, he asked how did I like it, and I said, very much I want to be a conductor when I grow up. Because I knew from the, from the time I was seven, you know, what, what, what really good music sounded like. And I'm not only talking about Mozart and Bach, I'm talking about Lennon and McCartney. This is good music, this is, you know, and you compare yourself. And yeah, I was, I, I was always, always discour discouraged. But for some reason I kept going. And, uh, and always taking long breaks. So I would, I would try something and, and be so discouraged, and then I would not compose anything for like five years. And then come back, try again, and everything would feel quite different. And then it would happen again. And of course, all of the music that I wrote until about eight, eight years ago is destroyed. So there's no, there's no record, no trace, which is, I think, you know, the way it should be for me anyway. Certainly the pieces of the last four years, I'm quite sure I'll keep, and I'll do some of them here. Um, and I'm very anxious about it, but I'm also uh, optimistic. It's probably not true, but I have, a, I have this feeling that every person in Bordeaux has a real uh, um, sense of aesthetics. And, and that, that, that every person here is thinking about what is beautiful. And when I walk on the street and I see people and, and they're thinking about, about themselves also, Try, that, that, they, that they want to bring their beauty into the world. They are artists. This is what artists do.